Hello guys, this is Samir Raza here and today we will be moving on to the next part of chapter 1 data representation of IGCSE O-Levels Computer Science. In the previous video, we discussed how negative binary numbers can be represented, how negative denary numbers can be converted into a binary and we discussed about two methods. I hope that video was clear to you all. In, the, in this today's video, there is no calculation fortunately and we will be discussing about the uses of hexadecimal number system. Let's just see. So first of all, let's discuss that hexadecimal is easier for us, for human beings, for users to understand. Okay. Binary is difficult to understand. It is difficult to read, difficult to write. There is one terminology that is called debugging. So debugging is when you do an error, you do a mistake. There is an error in your uh, data and it's like difficult to identify in binary but it's more easier to identify that error in hexadecimal so debugging is easier in hexadecimal but difficult in binary hexadecimal is easier to read write understand but binary is hexadecimal is easier to read write and understand but binary is difficult to read write and understand and the same goes for the debugging part. So what are the uses of hexadecimal? Where do we use hexadecimal number systems? Let's give it a review. So number one, we will be discussing about the HTML color codes. So hexadecimal number systems uh, is used to represent color codes in HTML. For example, if you are making up a color, so you can see the different combinations of red, green and blue it represented in hexadecimals make up a color. All right. So if you want to get a very precise color, you should be, you should be knowing about its HTML color code. Okay. To get precise colors on your websites, even you have this option in the paint tool of Microsoft windows and other softwares. All right. Then we have MAC address. Okay, so I'm not going to go into that much detail of the MAC address and the IP address because we will be discussing it in chapter three in much detail. But we need to understand that what is the MAC address and what is an IP address first. So a MAC address is a address, a unique address. Okay, it's a unique address that helps to identify unique address to identify a device on a network okay so if you want to identify a device you have a unique address uh, you can find it out you can identify it okay so MAC addresses are also represented in hexadecimal number systems with an example that I have given below and you can see it. Okay. In IP addresses, IP addresses are the addresses that are used to uniquely or used to locate a device on the internet. All right. So if I change my location, my IP address would also change with a different location. I will be given a different IP address. All right. So this specific representation of IP address is the IP V6 version. Okay. IP addresses has two types. One type is represented in denary number system and the other type is represented in hexadecimal number system. We will be discussing about it in detail in chapter three. Then a very important term examiner gives this term as to, to describe, to define in the uh, past, previous past papers. Um, what is a memory dump? So let's suppose I turn on my laptop at this point and I use it for eight hours. All right. So in those eight hours, whatever errors, whatever corruptions came up in the computer, all of them are stored at a specific location in the memory. All right. So memory dump, memory dump is actually the record of what happened in the computer's memory at the time of an error. All right. And usually these 
um, errors are represented in the hexadecimal number system format. For example, if a video game on a computer crashes and a memory dump is created, so how does it help the technician? So the technician or the user uh, analyzes the memory dump and looks for the hexadecimal values to identify the cause of the crash. So the hexadecimal values help the technician find the location of that point in the memory where the error actually occurred. Okay, so that is what we know about the memory dumps. And the last thing that we will be discussing about the hexadecimal number system is the error messages. So you, you guys might have seen uh, a pop-up uh, window or a dialog box uh, appearing up, popping up on your screen or when there is a crash or when a system is not working or when there is an error. And if you closely look, that error is actually in hexadecimal number format. All right. So error messages that come up in the computer are also represented in the hexadecimal number system. All right. So that was all about the uses of the hexadecimal number system. See you guys in the next video. We will be discussing about 1.2, the second part of the chapter one.